This is my story, Gary Holloway. How I started out as a geologist, went backpacking and bought lots of gemstones, became a self-taught jeweller, a diamond cut nut, and an inventor of all sorts of tools that are used all around the world to add sparkle to diamonds. Hi, I'm Gary Holloway and I'm going to explain how I became a sparkleologist. So I started out in life in a little country town and I studied geology. And so I have a science background, um, an applied science background, which is very relevant to what I do because I am a very applied scientist. So. After I graduated, I backpacked to London, as you could in those days, and I bought gemstones along the way, all through Asia, Central Asia. Um, when I got to London, I bought some jewellery making tools and I started making jewellery. So when I got back to Australia, I thought, well, I kind of like doing this. Um, so we opened this business in the building that I'm actually talking to you now in. And that was 44 years ago. So when I started out, I had become a self-taught jeweler because I had to set these damn gemstones that I spent all of my money on. So with a little bag of gemstones and $5,000 in the bank, I started making this chain and a few other chains too, but this chain in particular um, was very successful for me. Now, it wasn't as heavy as this one. Um, it was a very, very fine chain. It weighed about a third of an ounce. Um, most of what we sold <clears throat> and I supplied a wholesaler so every month I bought a kilo of gold and that kilo of gold um, I sold 900 grams of it to a wholesaler and I kept the hundred grams for the stuff that I made for our shop and we called the shop precious metals we didn't have diamonds in our name because I couldn't afford diamonds at that time so when I did get an order for a diamond ring, or if I wanted, if I had a bit of leftover money and I wanted to make some diamond stock, um, what I would do is I'd go to my diamond wholesaler. And he had three different categories of diamonds. Um, a, B and C. Now the A was the most expensive of course, and essentially they were more rare. They were higher colour and higher clarity. But whenever I looked through the parcels, I found it was actually the medium and the lower parcels where I would find the diamonds that were the most beautiful, the ones that sparkled. And so I studied him and other people in the diamond industry and worked out why it was so. So the way he would look at his diamonds is through the loop like this, and he'd have a light, a fluorescent tube just here. So when he's looking at his diamond, the diamond is black except for the light that comes through the back of the diamond. Because the loop, as you can see, is blocking all of the light that comes from this direction to the diamond. Plus his head, of course. So what I worked out was that the diamonds that had the most light coming through the back were the ones that people in the diamond trade thought were the best cut diamonds. Because they were predominantly looking to see whether there were any inclusions in the diamond because that was the primary price setter along of course with carat weight. So armed with this information um, and the fact that I was now studying gemology and so I had my Gemological Association Diploma of Gemology which gave me the right to call myself a fellow of the Gemological Association of Australia. And so about now, I started to become a cut nut. So here I am, I'm starting to become now an applied scientist. Okay, so in the gemology course that I told you, the Australian Gemologist Journal, um, ooh, um, this little medal that I won as the top student for the year in gemology. Well now, gemology wasn't a very difficult course for somebody who's got a science background, especially a geology background. Um, so I then went on to do the diamond course. So after I, well, while I was doing the diamond course, I had to do a little thesis. And so I learned about this little gadget, 
which was the precursor to the ideal scope. And uh, one of the nice people at De Beers, who had an office in Australia at that time, gave it to me on loan. Um, after De Beers left Australia, nobody ever asked for it back, so here it is. So along the way, I invented this portable version, which I still have suppliers overseas who choose my diamonds with this actual device, and they prefer it over the later one that I invented. So, off I go to my diamond merchant now, and when I'm at my diamond merchant, I'm now looking at the diamonds through here and saying, this one's a good one, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is good, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Because most diamonds don't pass this test. All of the diamonds that that bloke that's going to come on shortly and explain to you, do. So, I invented this and it was my secret weapon for my business. I didn't tell anybody except for students at the diamond course because I became the lecturer of the diamond course and shortly after I became the national convener of the Gemological Association Diploma of Diamond Technology. Okay, so when I was demonstrating to students, one of the students said, well, you know, what about the light that doesn't come from this pink because there's this gap here that you can see. So what I did next week, I put this little orange fluoro bit of cardboard, which I bought from the news agent, underneath, and lo and behold, I invented the first asset scope. Around about late mid uh, 1980s, and <coughs> today I actually manufacture and sell this little scope myself, but also under license from the American Gem Society because the AGS um, have actually patented it. And so they know that uh, they can't stop me doing it, so I actually make it for me and for them. So, a little bit of history. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do another change. So first off I started wearing check shirts, then I became a scientist and I started to get a bit more professional, and then I became a businessman running the business. And now we've moved into the 90s. And I've started to do some business management courses and I'm a businessman. And so I'm starting to run the business and now we're starting to make some money and I'm buying diamonds. And so now we're becoming a diamond store. So it took another 10 years to actually change the name of the business from Precious Metals Proprietary Limited to Holloway Diamonds. So Holloway Diamonds is what the business has been for the last 20, 25 years. It's been a diamond store. And that's what we do, and that's what I'm passionate about. So, as we moved along through that time, I started doing research. So that cut nut bloke that you saw before really got seriously involved in all sorts of antics. So, um, as I said, we wrote this articles this article actually took up the entire Australian journal um, for one of the three that they produce each year. And along the way, um, we ran a conference, a group of scientists and I, um, in Moscow. And um, you can see as you flick through here, this is my presentation, which has ideal scopes in it, not a big surprise. But then this is another presentation from somebody else and this is a presentation from the American Gem Society, who I manufacture this for. So this is the very first diamond cut conference ever held in the world. And as you can see, as I finger through, um, Idealscope was used and is very, very much used by just about everybody in the industry. Idealscopes in this presentation, Anyway, you get the point. <clears throat> so together and by myself, we published lots and lots of things in lots and lots of journals, lots of live presentations in Australia and around the world and so on. So by now, I've worked on a concept that if you put the proportions into my online calculator called the Holloway Cut Advisor, or most commonly known as HCA, which grades around about a million dollars worth of diamonds every day online and has done so since 2000. So basically what you do 
is you put in these proportions from a grading report and it spits out a result that you can see on the screen now that shows you what I think about this diamond. Um, it's not a selection process, it's a rejection process, but it works very well and it's been very much used by people who are buying diamonds and people who are selling diamonds. We moved along, we moved along, and a couple of years ago I added to HCA the concept of looks like. So now we put in the carat weight and the dimensions and I tell you whether the diamond looks big or small. That's based on its actual proportions for the size. So if it's, if it's very, very small for its carat weight, well, it's going to get smaller. But if it's very, very small for its carat weight, um, when you look at it through an ideal scope, what you're going to see is pale around the outside edges. And that's one of the benefits of the ideal scope. If you see that this, a gemstone is pale around the outside edges, of course, it's going to have leakage and it's not going to be returning the light from the front. Just like what I discovered when I first started on this journey that attracted me to the concept of diamond cut as being by far the most important thing of everything. We produced this diamond buying guide and in the diamond buying guide I try to represent that the, the cut quality because it's so hard for most people to get their head around um, has the least effect on price. The most effect is carat weight, of course, and then clarity has a very, very big impact. And so um, you can get this, um, we'll send it to you if you contact us, um, send it in the mail or uh, soft copy, whatever, whatever rocks your boat. So I became a self-taught jeweler wearing the check shirt. Um, then I moved on to being heavily involved in diamond cut research, which I have not stopped doing. And of course, running the business with the two shops, Canterbury and Brighton. And it's all been based, and the growth of the business has all been based on the concept that you can see the light return in a diamond with these very, very simple tools. And unfortunately, 95% of diamonds fail my tests. There's a couple of other tests involved too, but most, most diamonds fail the test of being cut to give beauty and sparkle and light return. And that's because most people don't know how to tell it. And included in that is the Gemological Institute of America, which has a cut grading system which absolutely favours the people who are cutting and selling diamonds, and it causes a rip-off um, for all of the people who want to buy a beautiful diamond for the person they love. If you come into our store, what you'll be shown is two diamonds. They'll be in a little black box like this, but um, you'll be shown two one carat diamonds. And you'll be asked to put them underneath the desk and see about the size difference. And what you're going to find is that a well-cut diamond can look as big as twice the size of a badly cut diamond. And then we'll show you the diamonds through an ideal scope. And you'll be then able to look at any diamond ring with an ideal scope and make a decision all by yourself as to whether or not it's got full light return or it's got some leakage. It's a very, very simple tool. Little kids can use it and line up the diamonds perfectly in terms of their cut quality. Why it's not the only tool that's used um, is simply because diamond cutters don't want to cut for beauty. They want to cut for the heaviest diamond that they can cut out of each piece of rough diamond. And Holloway Diamonds, we only sell diamonds that pass this test and other tests. And what's more, we hope that you will bring that diamond back to us and we will put it back into stock and you can have a bigger one and we'll give you a full credit for what you paid for that diamond towards your upgrade. Now, the reason that we do that and the reason that we make that offer is because every diamond we sell passes our tests and we will be happy to have it back. We will recertify it. We will make sure that there's no chips and damage. You'll have to pay if there is um, for recutting, very unlikely. And we will resell that diamond because diamonds are forever. 
So thank you. I hope you've enjoyed my little story.